Welcome to this overview of PXF Filler. So here I have this image of a bird on a power line. I want to erase the bird. One way we could try to do it would be to use the Edge Extend node from Nuke. So let's try that first just to compare. And I'm going to use the mat from my roto of the bird and the source is the image you want to repair. I gotta specify where my mat is, so it's the mat inverted alpha. I don't want to pre-multiply, and I don't want a ghost of my bird, so I'm gonna turn down detail amount. And now I have a pretty good infill. If it was just a blank wall behind a bird, it would be pretty good. I would be very happy with this, but it doesn't attempt to repair the power line here, so that's a problem. So let's see how PXF filler does instead. So let's go to the PXF menu, PXF filler. Image is the image I want to repair. Hole mask is the uh, alpha of the hole I want to fill. Here we go. By default, it doesn't do much better. That's because it's doing mostly a vertical fill right now. It's filling from the top and bottom. Of course, for this, it would make more sense to fill from the left and right, a horizontal fill. So let's swap our values here. I don't want any height. I want some width. So now as we're filling uh, wider and wider, you can see the edges are growing. So it's taking the values from the side of the alpha channel and smearing those values inside. So let's create more width enough so that the two sides meet in the middle and if we keep going a little bit more we end up blurring or blending the two sides together so that looks pretty good but I can see that the power line is not meeting in the middle so I can use the angle uh, uh, knob here to adjust the angle of the infill to make sure that the two sides meet in the middle so this looks pretty good to me I'm pretty happy with this Let's compare with Edge Extend. So of course, Edge Extend didn't even try to rebuild the wire, whereas PXF Filler, we could guide it by telling it we want horizontal with a certain angle. We don't have any of those options here with Edge Extend. So that's one thing. If we wanted to get rid of the wires altogether, we could attempt to do so. So let's try with Edge Extend again. Source is the image I want to rebuild. Matte would be the alpha of the power lines. Here we go. So this at first glance looks reasonable, but if we look here, whenever there's a sharp uh, line in the background, Extend doesn't even attempt to repair it. So that's the same kind of problem we've had earlier. So let's try to fix it with a another PXF filler. Let's, let's bring a fresh one. There image is the image I want to repair. Whole mask is the alpha of the power lines. And right away it's doing a better job. That's a bit of a coincidence because by default it's doing a vertical blur. So let's turn off the width altogether and lower the height a lot so we can see what's going on. So what's going on is we're taking the values uh, above and below and smearing them up and down. And eventually if we have enough size they will meet in the middle and we can adjust the angle to make them meet exactly where they should, like so. And then I can add a little bit more height so they blend together perfectly. So this looks reasonable. I've rebuilt the edge of the window frame here properly. So this is giving me a nicer result than edge extent. I can see the edges here of the window are nicer. Here we go. So that's in a nutshell, why you would want to use PXF filler instead of edge extend on some cases. The downside being PXF filler is usually slower to render. Edge extend is GPU accelerated and it's a bit quicker. So if you just have a, a, a very low detail background, extend probably is better. If you need to guide it with direction, uh, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, that kind of stuff, filler is probably better. So let's start fresh. I want to walk through the knobs with you. So I have my image input. That's the image I want to repair. Whole mask is the area I want to infill. Mask is the a post mask, just like any mask input on any nuke uh, node. So here I'm back to my vertical fill. 
So first we have to decide, do we want a vertical fill, horizontal fill, or both? So if I set my width to zero and my height to 10 or some number, then I'm using mostly a vertical fill, meaning I'm filling from the top and bottom only. If I switch to a value in the width and no value in the height, let's make that a bit smaller so it's easier to understand. Now I'm filling only from the sides. So I'm using values from the right and left side, and I'm not using any uh, values from the top and bottom. If I have and uh, values in both in width and height then i will be uh, at an angle with the uh, edge so if i have the same value between width and height then i'm 90 degrees to the edge so if i have a hedge that's vertical then I, the fill is going to go uh, towards the left if the edge is horizontal then it's going to go towards the bottom so it's always going to be 90 degrees to the edge and eventually if we have enough uh, width and height they will meet in the middle and start to blend. So if we keep going, they will blend and become uh, blurrier and blurrier. We can choose to fill or adjust the size of our fill using the size knob or the iterations knob. So the size knobs is how big the blurs are internally and iterations is how many times we're doing it. So if I have a tiny size, let's say one by one, now I have 10 blurs of one pixel that are all added together. And if I keep adding iterations, you can see that it's very sharp and it's retaining the sharpness of the edge, but it becomes very expensive because I need a lot of iterations to fill a very small hole altogether. So now I've got like 180 blurs hidden in my filler. So that will be very slow to render. So don't use iterations unless you really mean it and you want to preserve the sharpness. If we don't care about being sharp, it's much quicker just to keep our iterations low and increase the size instead. So notice that as I increase the size, it becomes much blurrier inside. We can choose to have soft edges on or off. This is a type of interpolation. So notice that the edge here has a bit of softness or some would call it anti-aliasing. If we turn off soft edges, then our edge inside here is hard and the interpolation is different. Usually I leave soft edges on. Angle makes sense when you have a horizontal or vertical blur. So if you set it to be horizontal, then angle can be adjusted. Same with vertical. So if you have a vertical blur, then you can adjust the angle that way as well. Doesn't make much sense with our image right now. So let's go back to horizontal. So you can adjust the angle that way and make it wide enough so it meets in the middle. Black outside is what happens if you have a hole that touches the edge of the frame. So let's add an extra bit to our roto here and make our fill smaller. So now what's happening is because I have a roto on the side here that goes and touches the edge of the frame, pixels are being uh, smeared from this side inward, but they're also being uh, taken from outside the frame in the bounding box and they're being smeared from the outside and they're peeking back in. Sometimes you may want that, but very often you don't. So to avoid that, you can turn on black outside and now pixels from outside the frame won't be uh, smeared back inside the frame. Mask channel is which channel to use from the whole mask. Usually it's alpha. You can choose red, green, blue, or alpha. Don't process alpha is whether or not you want to apply your infill to the alpha. So if I look at my alpha here, it's it, the filler is applied to it. I can leave it unmolested and not modified if I don't want it. And finally, we have the mix knob so we can mix down between our original frame and the result of our filler. So that's a good way to animate our, no, uh, our node for it to come on and off at certain times if we need it. And finally, we can mask the results. So we can, uh, after we've done the fill, we can choose to keep only a portion of it using the mask input. So now we can combine uh, our result with the original frame using a mask, just like most Nuke nodes. So there you go. So that was an overview of PXF filler. I hope you've 
enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.